Today on Art's Gun Shop, we're going to talk about the Remington Model 11. about the Remington Model 11. Uh, now before the Model 11 came out from 1906 to 1910 it was known as the Remington Auto Loading Shotgun. It was the first semi-auto made here in the States. They went on to make about 850,000 of these. They made them in 16, 20, and 12 gauge. Uh, the military used them. Uh, they used them in combat. They used them for guard duty and they even trained aerial gunners with them on how to shoot down planes which is kind of interesting. But, but anyway, we have a degrade here that we're going to clean up. Someone did a really bad restoration on it. We're going to clean this thing up. If you look at it real carefully, they did a, most Remington Model 11s aren't worth much money, but some of the high grades are actually worth quite a bit. This one here being a degrade with real pretty wood on it, it's going to clean up nicely. It's going to make a good restoration. And, uh, well, we're going to turn you over to Art. He's going to do the teardown on it. All right, the Model 11, uh, this assembly, they're really close to a Browning A5, but yet they're not. I've already pulled the form off. Um, some of these have uh, uh, steel pins that they put in the end of the form here, uh, and they have holes drilled in the uh, receiver uh, right there. This one has no pins in it. Uh, someone's taken them out and glassed them up or just didn't have them. Uh, the only thing those pins are really good for uh, when they put them in the uh, forms, they crack the forms and uh, they're totally useless. They don't, you really don't need those on there, but uh, once they're into the receiver, they twist around, they crack the forms on both sides. So that doesn't have the pins in it and that's fine. It, it really doesn't need them. Uh, this form we pulled down, uh, we've removed a lot of large dings. Uh, we're going to dress out most of that checkering and replace it all. Uh, I've already pulled the barrel off as we talked about. Uh, the uh, Model 11's, uh, the barrel ring is uh, silver soldered onto the barrels. The um, uh, Belgian Brownings are actually forged into the barrel, part of the barrel. Uh, the new Japanese models, of course, uh, the last of the Japanese models, they were silver soldered onto. Do they come off? Yeah, sometimes, but it's pretty rare. Uh, anyway, we're going to talk mainly about the disassembly of, of uh, this Model 11. It's basically, the same as a Browning Auto 5. This has the old square spring. The problem with the square springs is they have the sharp corners on them. They tend to dig into the magazine tube and score it up, so they went to the round radius springs. Uh, big, big improvement. Um, this cap is uh, engraved on the end, and it's all chewed up like a lot of other caps that are out there. So we're going to replace it. I've got a standard uh, model 11 cap we're going to put on it then we'll just engrave <coughs> the cap excuse me <coughs> so anyway we will commence to uh, tear this uh, gun down uh, the stock is held on just the same way as a Browning Auto 5 with this retainer screw here now this gun's got a lot of issues uh, we're going to take care of all of them um, the stock <coughs> for some reason up against the um, receiver on the bottom here is just missing a bunch of wood it's either been sanded off or uh, maybe either sanded it off or it's chipped off or something's happened so we're going to we're going to do something to replace that and build it up everywhere else the the, the metal and the wood fit is pretty good on the gun really it's been sanded on and refinished but they haven't heard it too bad. I, I suspect they sanded it low down here. It's real easy to do that if you're not careful. So we're going to have to build that back up, uh, which is not a big deal. So we remove our stock retaining screw. <clears throat> Take our stock off. This particular one has a, uh, and some of the Browning Auto 5s had it too. Have They have a steel uh, ring in here, uh, bushing. Uh, that's to keep them from beating out and getting loose, but they do anyway. So uh, on A5, when I find that in there, I, I just remove it and tighten the stock. It's fine. So the, this gun's got a lot of issues. It's, we're going to have to reshape it a lot up in here. It's going to lose most all the checkering. Um, the toe of the stock has been broken off, butt plate's broken. 
Um, not a big deal. I've already ordered and have right here a uh, aftermarket uh, butt plate that we're going to put on the gun. And uh, it's going to be very similar to what was on there. And it's going to look a whole lot better. Um, going to do that. That butt plate's had it. So this wood's pretty rough on this gun. It needs a lot of attention. But we're going to we're going to make it look new. We're going to finish it in kind of a semi gloss and recut that checkering. You'll see how good that look. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now go ahead and pull it down. Basically it comes down about like a auto five. Uh, we'll remove the trigger plate screws. Uh, you see, uh, as compared to an Auto 5, there are no uh, lock screws on the on this uh, trigger plate screw. There's no lock screws on the uh, carrier screws. There's one lock screw here, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so let's go ahead and remove the trigger plate. And uh, this particular screw is really burred up. Might be able to straighten it out, but just out of curiosity, because I've never tried it before, I grabbed an A5 trigger plate screw and put it in there and it, it fit perfectly so I can replace that. My next question, I've never tried it, is uh, I got some really burred up carrier screws. I'm going to uh, try an A5 uh, carrier screw, see if that works by chance. Not too many parts interchange, but some do. All right, so we've got one trigger plate, the rear trigger plate screw on this. This uh, front trigger plate screw, I'm calling it, is not really a screw. Uh, this lock screw is on this particular screw here to uh, hold that in place because it's not a screw at all it is a pin as you will see it'll dry right out so it looks like a screw but as you can see uh, no threads so it's not a it's not a screw so anyway trigger plate comes out and uh, basically it's pretty much like a, a browning uh, a trigger plate uh, your safety sear not really what I consider the suicide safety, you know. So when you go to put this safety on it, your finger slips off of it, you know. It goes, hits the trigger, and boy, oh boy, no wonder they call that a suicide safety. That was not a good design. So we'll take this apart while we're here. Even though we have taken apart A5s before, have those on video, we'll just break this down while we're at it. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, I guess the question is, does the uh, Browning um, mainspring screw fit this particular uh, gun? I don't know. That's a good question. Never tried it. I kind of think it probably would. Um, just, uh, they're, they're shaped a little differently on the head. They're more of a bevel on the head, so... Um, we don't, these parts don't generally go bad ever, so you don't really have to uh, do much with them. Uh, take out your uh, hammer pin. Take out your, let's go ahead and remove the trigger return spring right here. Just hook it somehow, pull it back. And sometimes you have to kind of tap it out. Sometimes I don't even worry about it. they don't come all the way out. I've been known to blue them with them in place. Doesn't hurt it. But most likely I'll take it out later on. So we've removed our trigger. Now comes our safety. Your detents on your safety are right here. Um, they, they fit down inside the uh, trigger plate. And there's a couple notches back there. And that puts a detent on that safety. That is just not a good design at all. Terrible design. All right, so we're going to take out our uh, our carrier spring, hang on to it when you pop it off the pins because it wants to jump out. Now we're going to remove our um, carrier screw. Now I've got a really burred up carrier screw right there. I'm probably going to have to replace that because I don't think I could even straighten that screw out. More often than not, I can, but that one's really bad. So out of curiosity, and I've never tried it, Let's see if a uh, browning carrier screw will fit this gun so I can replace it with a browning carrier screw. Now here's the browning carrier screw. Will it fit? I don't know. I've never tried it. Uh, oh yeah, that should work just fine. This particular screw is a used screw. It's got a notch cut out of it. So I'll use a new screw that doesn't have any notch uh, cut in it. 
and uh, we will replace that that terribly burred carrier screw. Uh, both of them it looks like the slots are all walled out. So that's interesting. There are some parts that will interchange on these guns. Not many, but those do. So it comes apart just like an A5. Push out your um, action spring. Now I can tell you, the action springs. Uh, you can replace these with a Belgian made spring and they work just fine and uh, we've experimented around and you can also replace the recoil spring with uh, a Belgian made recoil spring so those parts interchange now the Model 11's you notice on these they do not have a um, magazine cutoff none at all and some of them here's a big old hole in the side of the receiver so you can drive out the locking block latch pin uh, and, and this uh, extends clear over into here. The Browning A5s, of course, went to a little smaller hole, so you don't have that great big old hole inside of your receiver. Uh, just looks better. Some of these don't have any hole at all. You take your uh, shelf stop out and drive it out through that. So they, they're different. There are some different variations of them. But now my locking block latch pin, I can drive right out through the other side. It will come out that way, or I can drive it out the other way. And there's your locking block latch. And uh, take the spring out. Get the pin out. Now, now your bolt will just slide right out the front. These are just about like a, pretty much like a Belgian made gun. Now, they do have a tendency, um, these rails um, in the uh, bolt, they're real skinny and they're real thin on the uh, locking block and they do shear off that's pretty common just looking at this one they look to be okay they look like they're intact we'll check it out before we go too far notice also on the model 11s they only have a right side right hand extractor they don't have the uh, left hand extractor other than that they, they look a lot like uh, a browning uh, bolt and they work the same way now in the receiver we have a couple other screws. This screw uh, is your holds your magazine, goes down into your. This catches your magazine and keeps it in from twisting out. They're usually pretty tight and don't come out anyway, but uh, that's in there. The uh, carrier latch uh, screws, um, they just unscrew. Now, if you get one, like on occasion I get, not too often on Brownings, um, this, uh, this is a blind hole. Uh, this, this screw will rust into place and they're tough to get out and if not nearly impossible um, That's the reason I like the newer style the roll pin where it's drilled all the way through and you just drive it through it works so much better um, But this one came right out no big deal um, Let's take our uh, see if we can get our shelf stop out of it. It's, it's coming out hard, but it's coming out So the roll pins uh, it doesn't sound like it, but to me they were an improvement in the, the Belgian made guns. Okay, and out comes our get a hold of it, our screw that holds our uh, shelf stop in place. So the receiver is now stripped out completely. You see, uh, um, remember the early A5s, their carrier spring uh, went on these two pins here. Then they changed that and took the pins out and put it on the uh, trigger plate so that's a big improvement so that gun is now ready to be gone over and, and prepped for engraving um, I say engraving I'm pretty sure it's gonna need to be touched up a little bit it's pretty rusty looking but we really won't know until we polish on it and uh, work with it a little bit to kind of get a feel for it and uh, who knows with a little, little luck maybe it won't need much engraving but it looks to me like it's gonna need a little so we're broke down ready to go all right, so we've been getting a lot of calls and people wanting updates on the uh, Remington Model 11. Uh, you just watched Art take it apart. You also noticed that uh, from the intro of the video to now, I grew this amazing beard. It's October now, and we've had this gun in the work a couple months now, and winter time's coming. But here's the deal. We've, I've got some still pictures of the stock. We'll show you. We've already repaired the stock, got the new butt plate on it, uh, got the wood pieces chipped back in. It's, we're checkering it right now. Going to be getting wood finish on it here pretty quick. And here's the receiver. It lo actually lost a little bit more engraving than we thought it was going to. Let's see if I can get it in focus for you. Here on the bottom, we lost some of the borders. Had a little bit more pinning than what we anticipated. 
Sometimes those pits are sneaky. They blend in a little bit more and they're deeper than what you think they are. But anyway, we're going to have the engraver go back over it, put some more pop to it. You can see up here some of this borders come out. Uh, anyway, it's in the works, but this is going to finish up the first part of this series. Uh, you're looking at well, probably another month and a half. We're good at what we do, but we're slow. Uh, look, they look good when they're done, though. Uh, like I said, we're looking at the woods well on its way. This is going to raise right now to get touched up. Probably another month and a half, and we'll have a video showing the reassembly and the finished product when it's done. Uh, from start to finish on this receiver and the wood and all that, for a full restoration, you're looking at this one was probably a six-month project from start to finish. But uh, anyway... We're working on it, and as soon as it's all wrapped up, we'll get you a video showing how to put it back together and some before and after pictures. But this will finish up the first part of the series. Thanks for watching.